ओके एडी ब्रदर्स गुड इवनिंग एंड ग्रीटिंग्स इन द लॉर्ड तो लास्ट वीक वी स्टडीड अबाउट मेनी टाइम प्रोफेसिस रिलेटेड टू आवर लॉर्ड्स सेकंड कमिंग एस्पेशली द टाइम्स ऑफ जेंटाइल्स सो वी हैवेंट टेकन टू यू द क्लास अबाउट द क्राइस्ट फर्स्ट एडवेंट actually i had sent a notes of a pdf to you so in that pdf uh, you might have seen there is also uh, one more uh, you see key to time prophecy and that uh, key to time prophecy is about uh, the prophecy of the lord's first advent that is mentioned in uh, daniel 9 chapter uh, probably i think ashish brother would have explained a lot of these things to you so just to revise a few points uh just for 5 minutes uh, and uh, immediately we'll go to the subject of the second coming okay so in the prophecy of uh, daniel 9th uh, chapter verses 24 to 27 there uh, uh, actually the people of israel are uh, given a dedicated time of 70 weeks so it's called as a 70 weeks prophecy so in the 70 weeks uh, what all things uh, has to happen that is what we have uh, pictorially represented here in the chart here uh, the prophecy speaks that uh, from the beginning of the degree to build uh, the walls of uh, jerusalem to the messiah it shall be 69 weeks and uh, messiah shall be present for a week and he shall establish uh, the covenant with many uh, for a week and in the middle of the week uh, he shall be killed but not for himself but for his people that's what this uh, prophecy says so uh, this uh, prophecy if you see actually uh, this uh, prophecy begins with a degree of the building of uh, wall of uh, jerusalem there were actually two degrees uh, that was uh, given uh, you see uh, during the medo persian kings period one degree was in the period of uh, ezra where king uh, cyrus gave a degree to build the temple of jerusalem okay but uh, this was not the degree to build the walls of uh, jerusalem in daniel 9 chapter if you see the prophecy uh, actually speaks about the rebuilding uh, the walls of jerusalem okay uh, can somebody read daniel brother book of daniel 9 chapter book of daniel chapter 9 uh, verse 25 brother uh. daniel 9 uh, verse 25 mm. know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build jerusalem unto the messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks okay one minute so here it says three score and uh, how many weeks three score and two seven weeks, weeks and three score uh, shall three be score seven and... weeks and three score and two weeks correct now yes brother so three score means uh, how much what do you understand from this sir uh, 60 correct okay home brother clear now three score means 60 okay So three score plus two means how much? Sixty-two. Very good. Now three score plus two plus seven means how much? Sixty-nine. Very good. So it speaks about the sixty-nine weeks. Okay. So in the seventy weeks, you see, it says from the degree to build, you see, Jerusalem to restore Jerusalem and build Jerusalem. to masiya it will be 69 weeks it is okay so what actually it is telling about uh, rebuilding of jerusalem continue brother home brother i hope you are able to listen audio is clear yes 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 ah, okay okay ah, please uh, any doubt brother you can ask not a issue ah? oh, continue brother continue brother the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times ah, you see here you see it tells not the building of temple it says even you see the street the wall of jerusalem shall be built in troublous times so if you see the prophecy when it was fulfilled if you see it was fulfilled actually in the days of nehemia we can read that one in nehemia first chapter 
second chapter i'll just uh, summarize the things to you nehemia first chapter nehemia praised to the lord saying uh, is a uh, uh, you see the fort of uh, jerusalem the walls of the jerusalem have been fallen and is a uh, father's uh, sepulcher or uh, without any you see any protection and that is the time that he fasted and prayed to the lord and uh, nehemia was actually a cup bearer to king uh, Arthur Exus, you see, and uh, one day, as usual, he was uh, giving the wine uh, to the king. But this time, he was very much uh, depressed and very much dull, and his uh, face was totally, you see, very dull. And as soon as uh, the king saw Nehemiah in this condition, he identified that uh, Nehemiah is not feeling well. Immediately, the king uh, questions, you see. Uh, Nehemiah, why? What happened? Why are you so dull? You see, read uh, Nehemiah two, second chapter. Nehemiah second chapter verse two, brother. Nehemiah second chapter. Nehemiah second chapter, brother. <coughs> verse uh, two. Mm. Wherefore the king said unto me, mm. Why is thy countenance sad? Mm. Sing, so art not sick. That mm. sick, this is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then mm. I was very so afraid. Afraid, you see? Why was he afraid? Actually, a duty of a cup bearer is that uh, whatever food actually the king eats, uh, before that one, this cup bearer, cup bearer has to taste the food and give it to the king. Why is it so? In case if any poison is put by the enemies to kill the king, you see, in that moment, the cup paper who eats the you see, food, he will die fast. And thus the king will come to know that uh, the food or the drink is poisonous. So it was actually the responsibility and the duty of a cup bearer to always be cheerful before the king. Because if his face is very dull, the king will identify that uh, he has got some uh, scheme behind this one. He's trying to kill the king. If he gets it out, king will immediately hang him to death. And king always saw that Nehemiah was cheerful, but that day is very dull, very sad. And king clearly identified this is not uh, the physical uh, sickness. You don't have any sickness. You are very good uh, in, uh, bodily. But what is troubling you? He asked uh, Nehemiah. The Nehemiah immediately, uh, you see, put forth the matter before the king, saying, how can I be happy, uh, my lord, when my father's, uh, you see, graveyards or, uh, and the gates of the walls of Jerusalem, they don't have any protection, there's no wall. You see, it is totally consumed. It is always prey to the enemies. Then that is the time king asks, what do you want? Immediately, you see, Nehemiah prayed to the lord, uh, you see, and submitted his petition before the king. Read verse uh, 4, brother. Huh? Then the king said unto me, For what uh, dost to make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. See, he prayed to the God of heaven. Imagine what did uh, Nehemiah pray to the God of heaven in front of the king. Did he tell the king, please wait, I'll need him before you and pray to the Lord huh? and submit my petition to him, then I'll tell you a request. No, he prayed in his heart. One second. You see, in one second, what can we pray to the Lord? Tell me, one second, what can we pray to the Lord when, when everybody are before us? Can we kneel down in prayer? No. Then, then what did he pray? In his heart, he prayed to the Lord. What did he pray? Please help me, Lord. Very good. Correct. He told this one in only one beautiful word. Lord, let thy will be done. He said these things in his heart and immediately presented the matter to the king. You know, what was God's grace? Immediately, the king sanctioned a letter saying, what tall materials you want to build the wall of Jerusalem, take it 
and go and build immediately. You see, read verse eight, brother. Verse eight. Hmm. Nehemiah two eight. Yeah. Hmm. And a letter unto us for the keeper of the king's for king's for set that he may give me timber hmm. to make beams for the hmm. gates of the palace which hmm. appertain to the house and for hmm. the wall of the city and hmm. for the house that I shall enter into. Hmm. And the king granted me according hmm. to the good hand of my good upon God upon me. Uh, see, the king granted everything to build the wall. So this is the degree actually that is mentioned. You say, actually the people of Israel built the wall in 52 days and Nehemiah was granted full pay of leave of 12 years. In 12 years, they went to Jerusalem and built the wall. You see, in very tribulous times, it was built uh, that uh, the people building the wall, they ha had uh, one, uh, this is sword in the hand. In the other hand, they built the wall. So actually, it is speaking of this degree. Okay? The prophecy, you see, this says, from this degree to Messiah is actually 69 weeks. So this uh, degree, as per the history, when it was given, if you see, it was in 454 BCE. So, here it says, from the degree to build the wall of Jerusalem, to Messiah, the prince, it says. Now, you tell me, when did Jesus become Messiah? Was he a Messiah at birth? Was Jesus Messiah at birth? No. Yes, no. Correct. The word Messiah means actually Christ anointed one. Actually, when was Jesus anointed with the Holy Spirit? When did he become the Christ? After baptizing. Very good, brother. So, Jesus actually became Christ at a baptism. So, this prophecy is actually telling about uh, uh, the year in which Jesus consecrated to the Lord, in the year which he baptized to the Lord. So, 483, actually 69 weeks means 483 days it will come. We can calculate 69 into 7. You see, 69 weeks into 7 days a week. It will come to 483 days. For a prophet, one day is equal to how many years? One year. Very good. Very good. So, 483 days is actually 483 years. So, from 454 BC, 483 years, if you calculate, it is actually 29 AD. You minus and see. BC means reverse order. Unity minus. So, you will get 29 AD. So, 29 AD, was the year in which Jesus actually took baptism. Okay? See, how BC is calculated, AD is calculated, this is like, huh? I think I've explained to you last week. I will just repeat it. So, AD means what? BC means what? You know? What do you mean by AC, AD and BC? Okay. See, uh, tell me, brother. How about tell me? Tell me. Before Christ or after after? Death of Christ. Okay, good. So everybody thinks that is uh, AD means after death of Christ. BC means before Christ. BC means before Christ is correct. But AD is not after death of Christ. Because before Christ, okay. After death of Christ, AD means where is the period between birth of Christ to his death? Okay. So actually, AD means in the year of the Lord. BC means before Christ. But uh, it is not AD means after the death of Christ. Okay. AD actually means anno domino. It is a Latin word. Okay. It means in the year of the Lord. So BC means before Christ. AD means in the year of the Lord. Okay. So all the AD, uh, it is like going in the graph. We have studied in the school now. So the numbers goes on increasing. But BC, the numbers goes on decreasing in the reverse order. Therefore, Whatever BD, BC, before Christ uh, uh, years you have, you need to minus to get the, uh, you see, dates. And whatever AD dates you have, you need to do additions. Okay? 
So uh, this is what you have seen. 483 years minus 454 BC, you get to 29 AD. Okay, since uh, Messiah the Prince is actually 29 AD. Okay, so here uh, this is the only prophecy in Daniel 9 chapter that speaks about the da Christ first advent. Okay, when Christ actually came to the earth and what year did he take baptism? That is given only in this prophecy. Okay, there is no other prophecy in the Bible which is uh, speaking of the Christ first advent. Okay, so what all things he, he was supposed to do? That he was free, he was supposed to finish the transgression, make the end of sin, make reconciliation by iniquity. Okay, all these things he did by his sacrifice on the cross, and his sacrifice on the cross brought everlasting righteousness. That means permanent righteousness. The people of Israel is to get temporary righteousness by offering the sacrifice of bulls and goats, the blood. Through the blood, they should get temporary righteousness. But by the blood of Christ, they got a everlasting righteousness. You see, they were justified permanently before God. And it sealed the prophecies. That means there was a guarantee that uh, all the prophecies regarding thousand years or uh, second coming will be fulfilled because of the sacrifice of Christ. That all was dependent upon the death of Christ on the cross. If Jesus faithfully died on the cross, then definitely all things would be fulfilled. Then to anoint the most holy means to anoint the church with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Okay. Now, the prophecy also says that Jesus died in the middle of the week. That means, middle of the week means in a week, there are seven days. Middle of the week means three and a half days. Now again, three and a half days for a prophet is equal to three and a half years. Okay. So, Jesus actually did the ministry for how many years? Three and a half years. This is the prophecy. There's no other prophecy either in the New Testament and the Old Testament that speaks that Jesus uh, did the ministry for three and a half years. Okay, this is a prophecy. See, so Jesus was after baptism, three and a half years, he did the Lord's ministry. Okay, so 29 AD plus three and a half years will get to 32.5 AD or uh, 33 AD. We can only often say 33 AD. 33 AD was the year in which Jesus actually died on the cross. Okay. And further to uh, after his death, three and a half years, the covenant uh, was, uh, you see, uh, made only with Israel. Therefore, we see, uh, we are studied in the class of baptism also that uh, apostles, uh, you see, were never uh, given the permission to go to the Gentiles until three and a half years after death of Christ. Okay, it was only to Cornelius whom the uh, word of God went. He was the first Gentile comment and that was after three and a half years of uh, death of Christ. Why? Because this was a prophecy that said that uh, people of Israel were given a special grace of 70 weeks. So only after 70 weeks, the grace has to go to the Gentiles. Okay, so further... From uh, 32.5 AD, if we add three and a half years, we get uh, 36 AD. So 36 AD is the uh, first uh, Gentile con convert, Cornelius, who took baptism in the Lord. So 36 AD. Okay. Now, uh, I would like to, you see, uh, show some things. Okay. Now, how do we calculate the birth of the Lord? Okay. When was actually Jesus Christ born? Anybody know? See, this prophecy tells about the first advent of Christ. Not only that one, this gives us a clue when Jesus was born on earth. Okay? When uh, was Jesus Christ born on this earth? Can anybody tell me? Home brother. Gopal brother. October. Huh? See, October. Home brother. Yes, we, we, we used to uh, celebrate at 25th of December. But, ah. uh, uh, <laughs> Very but, good. Uh, we, we, like, today we clear that it's on October. Are, I, what, brother? I thought of coming to your house for December 25th to eat Christmas cake and all. What you're telling is you don't want to celebrate? <laughs> huh? You don't want me to come to your house on December 25th? Can come is, any time, is, brother. <laughs> so you can have cake any time. Okay, good. Super. Excellent. Good reasoning. 
Very good. Very faithful answer. Very bold answer. Very good. It's correct. Absolutely. See, whenever we ask this question, everybody tells December 20th. Now, how do we do it? How do we calculate? Of course, Ashish Padar has clearly explained to you, but just a few points. Okay. See, we all know that Jesus died in the month of Abib, in the month of Nisan. Correct? Huh? So, Nisan means when? Month of April. Correct? Huh? Yes, Padar. Correct. See, in Hindi, they called as uh, uh, Chaitra Mas. Correct, no? Chaitra Masa, Chitra Masa. In Hindi. Chaitra, it's called Chaitra in Nepali. Ah, Chaitra in Nepali. See, Chaitra means April. You go and see in your calendar. If you have your local calendar, in Nepali calendar, you go and see it's in April. Okay, that's the time when the Passover lamb was killed. So, Jesus died at... Uh, uh, that, uh, you see, month, in the month of April. Now, Jesus uh, lived on this earth for how many years total? 33 and a half years. Correct, Abhudar? Yes, Abhudar. Correct. Now, we will go 33 and a half years backside to know when actually Jesus was born. Okay? We will, uh, instead of going uh, complete 33 and a half years, we will just take the month into consideration. Six months back we will go. Because so any complete year, if you go also, it will come to the same month. Okay? So we will just go first six months backward. Okay? Observe it clearly. See, April is the... Okay? The first month we will go back. March. Huh? We are actually tracing backwards in which month Jesus would have probably born. Okay? See, first month over. Second month means February. We're going six months back. So, two months we've gone back. Then, third month, uh -huh, January. Then, fourth month, uh, we went back. So, your December is gone. December 25th, there only it's gone. Okay? Then, fifth month. Now, six months later, Six month is actually October. So if you go six months backward, it will come to October. Okay? So this is how we calculate and see that Jesus actually was born somewhere in the month of October. There are biblical reasons also. Okay, I'll tell you. When was the Atonement Day festival celebrated in the Bible? Do you know? Atonement Day festival. There was actually seven festivals in... Correct. Huh? Which brother? When brother? Seven month. Seventh month. Very good brother. So, if you see... Huh? One minute. See, seventh month from April. Huh? April. May. June. July. August. September. October. So, seventh month means which month actually? October. Yes. So, he was the atonement day sacrifice which made us, you see, to have relationship with our God. He made man and God as one. You see? He made a, a covenant. You see? There was a disfellowship of mankind, God and freedom. But Jesus made it one. That is called as at one man. Atonement means what? At one agreement. That's a complete word. Okay? Now, see, this is biblical proof. Huh? So, that's the reason we say October. Now, got it? Hmm? So, then what about Christmas? Then what about Christmas? December 25th. Then how did it come into picture? December 25th. This Santa Claus... Christmas tree, how did it come to picture? Is it given in the Bible? No. Eh? No. Then how did you celebrate all these years? Eh? Man made rituals. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show it is there in the Bible. Open Jeremiah, 10th chapter. 
Jeremy 10 chapter, home brother open. Jeremy 10 chapter, Gopal brother open. 10 chapter, verses 2 to verse 4. Read brother, it is given there. About your Christmas tree. Huh? Uh, it is given there only. Read. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2, 3, and 4. Thus said the Lord, Learn not the way of the hidden, mm. and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the hidden are dismayed at them. Ah, see? What did God say? Don't be surprised at the, you see? Signs of the heaven. Now, what is the sign in the heaven? They look for in Christmas period. What do they look in, in the sky on the day of Christmas? Star. Ah, very good. Which star? Like morning. Morning star. Evening mm -hmm. star. Which star? Correct. You, you told correct. Which star? Tell me. Oh, brother, which is the star? Bright, bright star. Very good. Birth star. Birth star of whom? Jesus Christ. Oh, 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 what happened? How this uh, star came? When Jesus was born, there was a star, no? Correct, no? Mm. Ah, you see? That is the reason everybody put a star in front of their house. Correct, no? You also would have put a star, no? <laughs> <laughs> we will see about the star now. What did God say? Is it, did he agree? Did he told to put a star in front of the house? Read that verse again, brother. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the hidden. Okay, what did God say? Did he say to learn and put properly? No. He said, learn not. Don't do it. Don't do it means don't do it. He said, this is the way of the heathen. This is the way the heathen people do. The Gentiles who don't know God, they do. They are uh, very surprised at the signs of the heaven. You see, what signs of the heaven? They say, no, sun god, oh, moon god. Our Christians are going behind star god. Eh? Super star god. Eh? Correct, no? Now continue. What does he say? Continue, brother. Huh? And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathens are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one, customs of the people are vain. This is waste. For one, mm. for one cut it a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. Ah, that is what they do now. In Christmas time, what do they do? They take the Christmas tree, cut it, they plant it in a pot. Then next, what did they do? They, they chop it like this one now. Like a cone shape. Then next, what they do? Uh, fourth verse. They deck it with silver and with gold. Silver bills, golden bills, golden sun, silver moon. Uh, then. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. Then it move not. They move not. Put all sorts of decoration and say, Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. <laughs> Where is it given in the Bible? No jingle bell, no Santa Claus, Grandpa. All these things are the ways of the Ethan. That was God's words. Uh, that is what God says. Don't follow it. So then how did this one came into existence, if you see, dear brother? This came during the period of Antichrist. We studied, no? <clears throat> Actually, the Roman people who got converted to Christianity, they were pagans, like uh, how the people in India are called as Indians. Similarly, the people who are worshipping pagan god, they, their gods were called as pagan gods. Okay, So those people were called as, uh, you see, uh, pagan people. And they, that, that religion was called as paganism. So they had a lot of festivals. But once they came into Christianity, there's no festival at all. So everybody got bored and they began to go out. That is the time the church adopted all the pagan festivals into Christianity. How did they adopt, you know? Actually, December 25th, in paganism, there was a festival where they used to worship, you see, sun god. Hmm? Sun god. And uh, 
Dionysus was a son, was the only son of that sun god. Okay? And uh, he was believed that he was born on December 25th. So what happened? When they all became Christianity, there was no festival here. Then what did they do? Jesus is the son of God. Here, Dionysus is the son of God. So both are the sons of God. So instead of worshipping Dionysus, that day they began to worship Jesus. This is how that picture came into existence of December 25th is the, uh, you see, birthday of uh, the son of God, Jesus. You know, uh, you know, what are the other names that is given for Christmas? Christmas. Correct? Huh? Christmas. That is the meaning of Christmas. What is this Christmas? You know, what is, what is the full form of it? Huh? Christ mass. Mass means what? Mass. Where do you see mass? Mass. You, you don't have any mass. It means, uh, ah. it means a huge people group. Correct. The broke the bread and wine. That is called the mass. Correct. Brother. So here on December 25th, Christ mass. In the name of Christ, is to begin to do a mass. So that is how Christmas came. Okay. Now there is one more name for Christmas. You tell me what is the other name for Christmas? Xmas. Very good. Xmas. Now what is this Xmas? What is this Xmas? How did this Xmas came into a picture? You know how? Huh? When we don't know somebody, somebody's name, what do we tell them? Mr. Mr. X. Very good. Mr. X, Y, Z, we say, no? <laughs> that is how. Huh? They don't know for what they're doing this festival. That is the reason they put to X means. X means what? We don't know. We are celebrating it. Why? Because our forefathers are celebrating it. We are celebrating it. Our forefathers are cutting the cake. They're eating the egg. They're eating the biryani. They're eating chicken. Drinking wine, I am doing. They are putting the bells. They are decorating the Christmas tree. Why? I don't know. My father, they told me, I am doing it. Eh? Santa Claus, giving gift to everybody. What does the Bible say? Be not uh, dismayed with the signs of the heaven. Don't do the way of Ethan. They don't know. That is the way Xmas actually means. You see, this is how it came into picture. Now, let us go about the star. Now, who is the star? Huh? I, I, have I told you about the star? About the Jesus' birth? How the star came into existence? Have I told you? The star of Jesus. When Jesus was born, a star came now. Have I told you about that one, brother? Yes, once you told about that. Okay. Huh? See, everybody thinks that uh, that is the star of, uh, you see, huh? uh, Jesus, uh, because Jesus is the star. Huh? Correct. Uh, why? Why? Because uh, mm, everybody thinks that uh, uh, numbers 24, 17, brother. Numbers 24, 17. Please read, brother. Numbers 24, 17. Mm. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not me. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Seth. See? A star shall rise out of Jacob. So everybody thinks that this star is, which is the star? Who is the star that shall come out of uh, Jacob. I thought that was Jesus. Correct. Uh, tell me. This is Jesus. Correct. Uh? Uh? Correct. Uh? Yes, I thought before. 
correct. That, that's correct. There's nothing wrong. Jesus is speaking of Jesus only. But is it the same star that appeared during the birth of Jesus? That one we need to study. Okay. Okay. Here it says, you see, here it says that Jesus is the star. But did he come as a star in the sky? Or was he born in a manger? Born in a manger. Ah, so here it says Jesus is the star, but not that he will come as a star in the sky. Everybody are confused with these words. Okay? Now, Jesus is called as morning star. Doesn't mean there is a little star in the sky. Correct, no? Huh? Jesus is called as light of this world. Correct, over there? Yes, brother. Now, does it mean that uh, all the tube light in the house is Jesus Christ? No. <laughs> all the light in this world is Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is the reason I put candle. Huh? Oh, this is light. This is like light a candle. Huh? You burn the candle. That's very wise. Huh? You burn in Jesus Christ. Huh? See, a total confusion. This is the reason we call that as Babylon. We'll study all these things in the future. Okay. Let us come to... Matthew second chapter. What actually happened there? You see, everybody thinks that uh, this star is actually a star sent by our almighty God. Okay. If, imagine, if this is the real case and if it's a real thing, okay, uh, if that, that star was actually the star sent by God, then that star should have led the three wise men directly to the place where Jesus was born. Correct, huh? But let us see what actually happened there. Matthew, second chapter, brother. Read from verse 1, brother. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod, mm -hmm. when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled. And Very good. Okay. Jerusalem. Hey, here, what happened? The three wise men, you see, they came in search of Jesus. Correct? No? Now, where did they go directly to see Jesus? Where did they go? Jerusalem. They went to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, which place did they go? Who's, which house did they go? King's Palace. Why did he go to the King's Palace? Think. Why did he go to the King's Palace? Who is the king there? What's his name? Herod. 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 Imagine, Herod is such a person. You see? he. We know about his history. Huh? That uh, he killed his own brother and uh, he has come to the position. Uh, he is such type of a person. Okay? Now, will he allow anybody to be as a king instead of uh, him? Will he allow anybody to be the king? No. no. Uh, then, without this background, the three people went directly to the king. And what did they ask? Read verse 2. Hmm. Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Ah, where is the king of the Jews? They asked. Immediately, what happened to King Herod? Read verse 3. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and ah, all Jerusalem with him. He was much troubled. Why? Who is this person who was born? I have killed my brother and come to this position. Without my knowledge, somebody, king is coming, means who is this one? I need to kill him. That was his thought. That is the reason he is much disturbed. Okay? Now, there they said uh, that uh, we have seen a star in the east. Correct, no? Uh, where did they see the star? Verse 2. Read, brother. Verse 2, read again. Uh. Verse for saying, Where is where is he that is born kings of the Jews? 
For we have seen his star in the east. Ah, uh, we have seen his star in the east. Then did they see the star in Jerusalem now? No. No, they are seeing the star in the east. That means these people are come from the east. So who is these people who come from the east? If you see, actually, you know, there is a place called Middle East today. You see, no Middle East. Huh? Middle East means which place? Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Abu Dhabi. All these places are called as Middle East. Why? Because these are all the eastern places to the land of Israel. Therefore, they said, we have come from the east. These were the wise men. From verse 1, we come to know that these are the wise men from the east. So, these people, who are these people? These are not the Jewish people. Underline it. These are not the Jewish people. These are the Gentiles. They came in search of the Messiah. Okay. How did this Messiah uh, knowledge go to the people of Gentiles and that was the people of the East. Now you, you see in the world map, Israel is there and the, to the East, there is today Iran, Iraq, uh, you see the Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, all these places are there. Now you tell me, which was the ancient name for Iraq? Today's Iraq, what was the old name as per the Bible? Babylon. Very good, Babylon. So who was in Babylon? Daniel. Very good. Daniel was the wise man. Do you remember? Yes. Yes. So Daniel was the leader of all the wise men. So we have seen in the book of Daniel that in each and every chapter, at the end of each and every chapter, Daniel gave a beautiful witness to all the wise men and even the kings acknowledged that the uh, real almighty God is the only one true God and uh, his kingdom is the true kingdom that is going to be established on earth. Daniel 2nd chapter you take, Daniel 7th chapter you take, Daniel 5th chapter you take, Daniel 3rd chapter you take, Daniel 4th chapter you take, everything. In the end, these things are very clearly given. Kings gave the commandment. Nebuchadnezzar, Belteshazzar, you see, they all, Belshazzar, they all gave the comment saying that uh, this uh, Daniel's God is a true God. And anybody speaking against this God will be put to death. Okay. So, in that way, what has happened? The kingdom of God matter. That Messiah is going to return. He will come as a stone, smite the image, found the image and establish his kingdom. This information was given by Daniel to all the wise men in the east. You see, his companions who were staying together. Just now we read about the prophecy of Dan Christ's first advent. In which chapter did we read? Chapter 9. Very good, of book of Daniel. For Christ's first advent. So the same prophecies, they also have this understanding. Who? The people of the wise men and the prophets. They were actually searching. You see, uh, from the prophecies, how this is going to be fulfilled and what time Christ is going to come. Okay? See, this is given in the Bible. Peter. First Peter, brother. Home brother, you are there? Home brother. Second Peter. Sorry, first Peter, first chapter. Verse 10, 11. 1st Peter, 1st chapter, verse 10 and 11, brother. Huh? Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ... Time. What or what manner of time, underline. Hmm. Continue. Of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory, and the glory. that hmm. should follow. Yes, that means this is all speaking about the Christ first advent, how we should suffer and all these things. So the manner and the times, they all are studied, they all are searched from the Bible, the prophets and all. So similarly, this understanding, this information has gone to the people of the 
you see the wise men in the east these are the people who do friends with uh, daniel who were living is uh, living living uh, during his days okay but they had their own calculation like uh, we know that uh, you see the astronomers they usually calculate uh, the birth of some people based upon the constellations in the sky correct now so today also if we are born in any of the month we are born in one of the constellations correct of of course we don't believe it but the heathen people believe it the heathen astrologers they believe it correct now brother yes brother so in the book of daniel we read along with daniel they were soothsayers astronomers foretellers you see all these people were there with the daniel so they are calculated in their own way as per the biblical prophecies which were revealed to them by daniel they have calculated in their own understanding <clears throat> that uh, messiah was supposed to be born in this constellation that is the meaning of the stars we have seen his star in the east means what we have seen his constellations in the east in our place only we have convinced we have seen this uh, you see constellation that messiah was born was supposed to be born in this constellation okay and of course generally they thought that uh, messiah is a king the king means you should be born actually in a uh, huh? king's palace as a prince so directly they went to the palace okay why did they go because they thought uh, he is a king but they did not know that uh, messiah was born on the platform you see so once they went and asked to the king herod he was mustable now what did king herod do he immediately did not react now what did he do he gathered the priest the scribes and cross checked it read matthew 2 4 and matthew uh 2 4 5 6 hmm. and when and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together he demanded of them where christ should be born and they said unto him in bethlehem of judea for this it is written by the prophet and thou bethlehem in the land of judea art not the least among the princes of judea for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule by rule my people israel mm. so what did do he did not uh, directly believe these words he took his words of the wise men and cross checked it with the biblical prophecies with the scribes they told yes is correct this is correct this is the time that uh, messiah should be born he, he should be born in bethlehem now what did he do he cross checked uh, both the uh, information and tallied both together whether it is true or not read verse 7 brother ha uh. then herod when he had privately called the wise men inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared ah uh, what time the star appeared so he is cross checking the both the times is it the same month almost is it correct matchingly uh, because the wise men astrologers they would have calculated in their understanding uh, constellations so that uh, and biblical prophecies both were coinciding he thus he came to know that the ruler is already born in bethlehem now what did he do he called them privately and told okay go and search the child very carefully if you get the child please come and inform me so that i also come may come and worship him and he told and sent the three wise men read brother next verse verse 8 hmm. and he sent them to bethlehem and said go and search diligently for for the young child and when ye have found him bring me word again that i may come and worship him also see that he may also come and worship now you tell me if uh, the wise men uh, again came back and told herod that uh, jesus is born here would uh, herod uh, worship uh, the child or uh, what did he have done he will kill he would have killed uh, so immediately read the next verse very very important read brother huh? when they had heard the king 
they departed and lo the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was ah now the star moved did you observe when the star moved when he went out of the king's palace herod's palace that is the time that the star moved now you tell me if this was really the star sent by god then why take the wise men to the king's palace he could have directly taken the wise men to the place where jesus was actually born this was actually indirect sign the devil was giving to whom herod he knew very well that if herod comes to know that messiah is born here he will definitely kill the child that is what happened next immediately you see satan is very clever you see we are we have studied the subject of the seed of the woman do you remember almost one year went off huh? the seed of the woman shall bruise the huh? head of the serpent head of the serpent the plan and purposes of the devil will be bruised by the seed of the woman jesus christ so if a seed is born only now it will be crushing the head if the seed is uh, huh, killed as soon as it's born what will happen satan's work will be easy that is the reason he send the star you see he made a particular star from the constellation to move to the place where actually jesus was born okay the three wise men came they came and gave the gift and all but uh, did they return to tell the information to the king no the angel directed them that you should never go back to the king so they went in the other way to their own place they were there and then immediately what happened we read in the bible that uh, immediately you see ha huh? the angel warned even mary also so they took uh, the baby jesus uh, from that place and they also went away and herod what happened immediately herod began to search uh, and he began to kill all the male childs okay so this was a clear proof actually to prove to show that uh, you see this star was actually a, a guidance a, a, a sign to show that uh, jesus uh, you see uh, was uh, born in this place uh, was, a, was actually a, a, a you say what do you say a direction for the uh, king herod to kill uh, messiah so So these stars and all we are not supposed to believe. Therefore, none of the people of Israel believed that one. See, did any of the people of Israel believe that star? No. You see why? Because they were, you see, believing more in the sure word of prophecy. So, putting stars, putting jingle bells, putting moon or uh, all these decorations and all, this is all not in the Bible at all. This is totally out of the Bible. Hence, December twenty fifth or Santa Claus or Christmas tree. is not there in the bible so jesus was born somewhere in the month of october not in the month of december this is all actually you see uh, <clears throat> and scripture okay brother <clears throat> okay i oh, hope this is clear the first advent and the birth of christ is clear ashish brother uh, gopal brother home brother clear yes brother yes brother okay <coughs> brother could you please repeat it again the correlation between the month of uh, nisan and the atonement day sacrifice in seven months how you calculate it okay see i'll tell you see this is the calculation <clears throat> see uh, i'll show you back okay <clears throat> see <clears throat> jesus was actually uh, you see killed as a passover lamb in the month of <clears throat> april okay so from there we need to come Six months back. Why six months back? <clears throat> Jesus actually lived thirty-three and a half years. That means thirty-three uh, years, six months on this earth. So the Raj, you... sorry, sorry to interrupt. I understood this part, but I am okay. asking that uh, after April you add seven more months and come to atonement day sacrifice. It's seven okay. months. Hmm. Not subtract, but add. Hmm, add correct we need to add add see april may june july august 
September, October. October is the seventh month. Could you please tell me the uh, tell us the background of this? Why the background they... of this actually is the background of this. If you read in the Bible, it's given in the book of Leviticus. So there it is that the Atonement Day festival has to be beginning in the seventh month, in the month of Tishir, I think, mostly in, uh, in Hebrew, I think it's called the month of Tishir. So it's in the seventh month. So in the seventh month only, the, the law of uh, Atonement Day was supposed to be uh, uh, beginning. So that uh, seventh uh, month, actually from month of Nisan, that is month of uh, April, uh, it comes to, uh, to you see, uh, what do you call as uh, uh, the month of October. So why that has got something relation to Jesus, if you see, during the atonement day, the people of Israel and uh, God were again reconciled for an entire year. You see, that was the uh, meaning of the sacrifice of the atonement day, where uh, uh, that uh, people of Israel and uh, God, they were in covenant relationship for the entire year, all their sins were forgiven. So similarly, the entire mankind's sin was forgiven by which sacrifice? By the atonement day sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, he was born in the month of October. This is a you see, cross reference we can give that uh, Jesus was born in the month of October. Yeah, if, if, if it's quite a cross reference, but it's not mm. directly related to birth of Jesus because atonement it uh, it, re it relates to death of Jesus. You see, correct. Uh, atonement day is related to the death of uh, Jesus only, but Jesus main sacrifice was in the month of. April, but in the type and anti-type, there uh, we see that these are the significance. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so we can't take uh, that. Uh, oh, just because uh, atonement day uh, sacrifice was given in October or year also, Jesus was, should have died in October. Correct, no? Mm -hmm. So nowhere is given that uh, Jesus died as atonement day sacrifice, but in the Bible is given that Jesus is died as a Passover lamb. Mm -hmm. Correct, no? Mm -hmm. So if you if you go back. Atonement day is also given. So, the, in, in which way uh, that is got related to the sacrifice of Jesus, if you see, that is the beginning. So, how did we atone with God? It is only because of the death of Jesus. But all that began with his birth. Okay? So, that is the way this is, birth is uh, very important. Uh, this is one of the cross reference to prove that uh, October is, uh, that is also given in the Bible. Okay. Okay, brother. Gopal brother, home brother, clear? Yes, brother. Okay, that is given in Leviticus 23rd chapter. You can read it in your house. Leviticus 23 verses 27 is given in the atonement day, which is the seventh month. Okay? Leviticus 23, 27. Okay, any other doubts? Any other questions? The Razu, just, huh. just to add in your comment, uh, Leviticus 23, 26, it speaks about uh, the seventh month, but Exodus 12, 1, it particularly speaks that mission is the first month. So we need to add both these verses, Exodus 12, 1 as well. So that will be more clear. Because Exodus 12, 1, it says that mission is the first month of the year, and uh, Leviticus 26, it's seventh month. So that will be more clear. Both are different uh, pictures, brother. So we don't want to mix it. Okay. So there it is speaking about the Passover sacrifice. Here it is speaking about the uh, atonement day sacrifice. So here we are trying to show that October month, the seventh month is given here. Uh, anyway, I mean the counting of uh, month, it's same. No matter ah. whatever the fifth is, you're right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The first month will be the same. April, the month, correct. The same. First month will be April, Abib. Abib, from there only it begins. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru. Okay. Okay, any other questions, any other doubts? Any other questions, brother? Gopal, brother, home, brother? No, no, no brother. Home, brother?
Home brother, you are there? Are you able to listen? Okay. Then uh, this uh, uh, clarification about Christ first advent, it is okay, brother? That Jesus was born somewhere in October is clear, no? Yes, brother. Okay. So next week, we will see about, uh, you see, uh, Lord Saparoshya. Okay, Om Brother is on chat. Okay, good. Thanks, Om Brother. Okay, we will see next week about the uh, Lord's uh, second presence. That means when the Parosha actually happened and now in which period we are living. Are we living in the Parosha or Epiphania? <clears throat> so what is this uh, uh, meaning? And uh, there is also other word. It is called as Apocalypse also. We are going to see that Apocalypse is uh, also in the coming week. Okay, brother? Okay, let us have a word of prayer and uh, end this uh, service. Uh, can anybody offer a prayer? Gopal, brother? I think, uh, can you pray? Home brother, uh, I think, slight network issue. Okay, brother. Give the permission. I will have a lot of money about the soap of 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 Ambro Amila Dinos, Panicana Moprata on a Sancho, Amito Amita Pima, Dere, the Danibad is not from the Pine, Dino Boyko, Sotago, like Danibad, Abani, Sobada, Sutneso, Saita Gorno Boyo, Dere, the Danibad, Sara, the Boyma Prashinsa, the Pine, you should do Amen. Amen. Bye, God bless. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother.